I'm uh, 57. I'm a recovering addict, um, which means that I went on the recovery journey starting three years ago. But actually, my addiction began many, many years ago. I, I was in active addiction probably for about 10 years. Uh, what I mean by that is around the age of 40, uh, I found that my drinking and drug taking and gambling were just out of control. And, and my life spiraled downwards. But when I, I reflect on my life and my recovery, you know, you can't really put your finger on when things began. And I think that I'd always used alcohol originally as a crutch and it would be my way of coping with life. Um, but the trouble with that is that if that's your crutch and it was mine, that alcohol was the thing that I lent on, the way for me to deal with feeling overwhelmed or feelings that I had, that as life gets difficult, and you've trained yourself. And that was what I say about me. I trained myself. The three words that describe my addiction journey. Because, of course, that was my default. I would run away from life when it became overwhelming. Now, I often joke that uh, God built the Priory at the end of my road for a reason. Because what I didn't know in 2009 was that I would come here three times over 10 years. And that was because it wasn't the fault of the Priory. Gosh, this is an amazing institution. It was, it was down to me. And in 2009, life had become overwhelming. I, I knew I was drinking too much. Um, and there were really the consequences were beginning to really come to, come to the front of my life. There was a final rock bottom for me in 2019. And uh, there was an incident with my sons, actually, where my older sons, um, I'd, I'd left my wife. I'd caused an argument on purpose. Uh, I'd left my wife on purpose. And actually, I'd called my eldest sons, who at the time were 19 and 22, and said, boys, can you come over? I don't want to be on my own. And actually, what happened was uh, I got drunk. I called a dealer and bought some cocaine. And I made my sons take cocaine with me. And they were in the kitchen. And I said to them, um, for you to be a man, you need to be able to do this. And um, they left. And uh, I remember being there in the middle middle of the morning, four in the morning, almost with, with the weight of what I'd done landing with me. And, uh, and I, I look at the emotion now of what that was. And for me, that was disgust. I think that was probably finally the moment that I was disgusted with myself and felt at that time, I need to do something now. You know, to find recovery, I think you have to surrender to many things. And I think you're, originally you think that that moment of surrender is a moment of weakness. But of course, I've learned that that moment of surrender is a moment, the moment of strength. You know, you find the courage to come here and you're full of trepidation and you, you, you try and imagine what it's going to be like. Well, actually, look, it's warm and inviting. Probably the greatest thing about it is that it's safe. Um, you know, I came here needing to be removed for 28 days. What I mean by that was that not that I was necessarily a danger to, to everybody. I needed the space to be able to contemplate where I got to in my life. So you're here in this lovely environment where it is warm and comfortable and, and supportive. But actually what goes on in this environment is greater than arriving for a training course or being taught something. You're with peers. And it's probably the first time for, it was for me where I was with other people mm. who were the same as me. The staff are wonderful. Um, we're living on a ward. We've got our own beautiful room. It's a, it's a single room with an ensuite bathroom. So you've got your own space, but then there's communal rooms. And I think the other aspect of that is that the communal rooms is another place where sorts of therapy happens. You know, when you're outside of, of the daily routine in the evenings, you're all together with your peers. And that's when you really begin to talk about who you are and you find you've got some empathy for people. And there's moments where they support you and you support them. Actually, I have seven children. So I've, I've recovered relationships with all of those. And my wife, um, she's amazing. You know, I, I recognize that in my active addiction, I put my wife through absolute hell. Yeah. And um, so I'm very fortunate. We're closer than we've ever been. I'm closer with all of my friends and family than I've ever been. So overall, I, I think myself and many other people look back at the Priory with fondness. Now, this is the place that saved my life. This is the place that gave me hope. This is the place where I was listened to and not judged. 
It's the place where they told me, David, you're going to be okay. And they gave me the tools to embark on my recovery journey. And that's why I'm a peer supporter, you know, to come back and still be part of the Priory, to now give back some of my time freely and help the next person. You know, that, that's a wonderful gift to, to maintain my sobriety in recovery.